here with more on the recent rally in gold. The stocks to watch. Chris Mancini, associate portfolio manager of the Gabelli Gold Fund, which is up nearly 10 percent in just the last month. Uh, Chris, we're seeing noticeable outflows in gold-backed ETFs. So what's driving the price higher? Right. That's a great question. So given these outflows in the ETFs, normally what we see is the price of gold fluctuates very closely with flows into and out of ETFs because um, the ETFs are the marginal buyer or seller of gold. And what we've seen now is gold's gone up, notwithstanding these outflows that you mentioned. So what that points to is there must be physical buyers of gold that we aren't able to see. We don't know where they're coming from. We know specifically that um, central banks are buying. So China has bought, uh, but they've bought consistently over the last few months or last actually year and a half. Um, but we don't know exactly where the other uh, physical buyers are coming from. So it could be high net worth individuals. It could be Chinese retail. But there is some good momentum behind you. Say, you say market. physical buyers, but you mean physical gold people are buying. I mean, we exactly. saw the, the headlines about Costco doing all this business, mm -hmm. selling exactly. gold bars. Is this yeah. what you mean? Like yeah. People so, are going so Things like that, exactly. So Costco, we know, is selling lots of physical gold. It could be, again, high net worth Americans, Chinese, you know, buying physical gold, putting it in a vault. What does the demand say to you? In other words, why are people doing this? Whether it's a central bank or an individual or a family office? I mean, for what, what is it expressing? Central banks, what we know is that um, when Russia invaded Ukraine, the United States and European governments essentially confiscated Russians' uh, foreign exchange reserves, around $500 billion. And so China has $3 trillion of foreign exchange reserves. Um, they don't want that to be confiscated. So they're diversifying out of dollars and into gold. And other central banks around the world are doing that as well, because gold, you know, obviously cannot be digitally seized or confiscated like U.S. Treasuries or... or so they're taking dollars yeah. and selling dollars and buying physical gold and storing it because exactly. you can't get to my vault. Exactly, exactly. You can That's freeze it. my account. Exactly. You can you can do whatever you want through the banking system, but you can't come get my... Exactly. That's a, so that's a huge trend that's going on globally uh, amongst, amongst global central banks. So that's one big driver of the gold price. The other might be that, you know, uh, that individuals in China, for example, are seeing a faltering real estate market. That's where they've held their savings. Now they're saying, OK, real estate's going down. What we want to do is diversify into something that's a hard asset that we can store and hold for a very long time, hand to our grandchildren, something like that, um, and, and sock it away. So they're buying physical gold. When we saw prices of gold going up, like if you see it going up, say, 16 percent over the last year, prices of gold stocks, the shares, have gone up 30 percent. So outpacing gold... Give us a sense of the companies that you like that represent shares of gold. Right. So the biggest holding in the fund is Agnico Eagle Mines. So Agnico uh, is a large Canadian-based producer, around 3.5 million ounces of gold per year. They have a huge presence in the Abbey Tibby Gold Belt, which is, which is in northern Quebec. Um, so very safe jurisdiction. There's a, there's a great mining jurisdiction. There's a town nearby called Val d'Or. So lots of good uh, gold production, relatively low cost, generates lots of free cash flow. Um, so that's like a solid core holding in the portfolio, pays a dividend.